Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Boyce Pastor Q. Thank you guys for joining for our 1030 a.m. service here live at Word Movers. 116 T Street North. Peace. Thank all of you guys for joining us this morning for our first service at Hogside Hotel. We thank you guys for joining us, allowing us to come into your home. This morning, we'll be blessed by the word. This morning, we're going to go, we're going to talk about confession. So, um, our first scripture, our scripture reading this morning is going to come from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. The book of Romans, chapter 10. Verses 9 through 10, if you guys can turn with me this morning there, and Tiffany Willis will be uh, reading the scripture for us this morning. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. The title of the message today is Confession. Amen? Amen. Tiffany, you want to read for us this morning? Good morning, Word Amen. with this family. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. And it reads, That if... Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess is made unto salvation. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearer, reader, and doer of his holy word. Amen. 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 Turn me this morning to the book of 1 John, not the Gospel of John, but uh, the, the, the Epistles of John back in the back where Revelation says, if you have your Bible this morning, if you don't, I'll definitely read from the Bible so you can definitely follow along with me. Um, the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9, if you can turn your attentions there, and the, the uh, title of the message the Spirit leads us this morning is talking about confession, how important it is for us to have our confession. Uh, 1 John Chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, yeah. we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Some of us say the truth is not in us. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time. Thank you for blessing this word. Father, God, give me the ability to be able to teach, yeah. preach your word in the hearts to be able to, be able to understand and prick their hearts, oh Lord, that they have a heart of Flesh and move a heart of stone, O Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The importance today, I want to talk about the importance of our confession. Yeah. Uh, there's two different types of confessions. The first confession that we do is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's why the Bible said that if you confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Yeah. That, first, in, that first confession puts you into a relationship with God. Yeah. Because there's only one mediator through man and God, and that's the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. That's right. So when I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, I make him my Lord and Savior. But even after I make him my Lord and Savior, I still have what the Bible calls unrighteousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. King David, like to call it presumptuous sins. Yeah. Uh, there's personal sins that I have, though I'm saved. Yeah. When God saved me, he did not deliver me from sin. When I say deliver me from sin, I want to understand what I'm saying. Let me, let me say that. I don't want to say deliver. When God saved me, yeah. he did not remove my personal sin. Yeah. Okay. He did not remove the things that I struggled with when I was in the Word, though he saved me. Okay. I mean, he bought me with the price. Yes. But notice this. I'm saved, but I'm still struggling with the things I struggled with before I got saved. Yes, I did. That's why you see you can be Christian, but still struggle with things that worldly people struggle with. Yeah. It's, it's not that God has changed your flesh. Though he can change your flesh, but he changes your flesh through your heart. Okay. Let's go. We must get out of the place where we're trying to change our lifestyle through mm -hmm. the external and yeah. change it through the internal. Good God. Notice this, the Pharisees and Sadducees were all about keeping external things to make them look clean. Mm -hmm. um, they, they say, why does the disciple eat with unwashing hands and why do they eat pork? And, and they, 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 they did all things that would uh, make the external look good, but the internal was still messed up. Yeah, so right. Jesus said, you know what? You have all the external things correct. You don't eat pork. You're vegan. You're, yeah. Your clothes are clean. You wear good white. And all those okay. external things you do, but internally, your, your heart is still not good. Yeah. So what Jesus began to teach him is, listen, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles the body. He said, but what comes out of your mouth yeah. is what defiles you. He says, because from what comes out of your mouth comes from the heart, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So he said, listen, you have a clean outward appearance, but inside you're, you're dead. Yeah. He said, stop trying to correct the outside, and if you do, the in, if you do correct the inside, the outer will come. Yep. Jesus, through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is working on us from the inside out. Some people have used religion, and religion is only correcting your outer, but not your inner. Religion has a way. The Bible says, 
for they have a form of godliness. Yeah. But they have the power of their own. Look up. You know you can look godly but not know God at all? Yes. Yes. A lot of us look godly. We've learned how to dress church up. People oh, okay. notice this. Well, the reason why people don't know I'm a pastor mm -hmm. until I speak. Yeah. Right? Because I don't dress like what the religion say it should look like. Good but neither did Jesus. Yeah. Jesus oh, said, God. Jesus said, you shall know a tree right. <laughs> by its fruit. Yes, God. And you have to be able to taste a person's fruit. That's right. Yeah. The fruit of a person is a person's conversation, mm -hmm. person's mannerism, characteristics. That's fruit. Jesus okay. said you will know them not by what, what they look like, by, by their fruit. That's why he says the love of the, uh, the, the, the fruits of the spirit that you must be able to obtain is love, peace, joy, happiness, long suffering. He said if you have the fruit of love and, and people will want to be around you because of the type of fruit you have. Mm -hmm. Not because the way your tree looks, but everybody wants to have a good looking tree. Yeah. But we found out that that Adam and Eve found out that trees that look good doesn't profit me any. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It can be a good looking tree but have bad fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because somebody decided to work on the external of the tree but never decide to get down into the roots of a thing. Mm -hmm. Notice this a tree can be nice, tall, big and have bad fruit. Yeah. yeah. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of the water that bring forth his fruit in its right. season. The tree can be great looking, it can be beautiful, but the fruit can be no good. Yeah. God, I remember God, I think he told Nebuchadnezzar, he showed Nebuchadnezzar in a dream, where he cut that tree down mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and left the stump. Yeah. God says, listen, I may as well cut the whole tree down and start over because it's bearing bad fruit. Yeah. That's what God has to do with us, and he did that to Nebuchadnezzar because yes. Nebuchadnezzar was arrogant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God says, I need to be able to cut him off. Humble him, yep. humble yourself, and you shall be exalted. Exalt yes. yourself, you shall be humble. Yes, Sometimes yes. when you have bad fruit, God has to cut you off yes. and get down to the root yes. so yes. that you can bear yeah. forth good fruit. Yes, good go. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He's talking about confession. Why is it important that I confess? Because I'm saved, but I still have unrighteousness. Yeah. Yes. yes, you can be, you can, you can, you can confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but then on a daily basis. You have to confess. I said this morning that your confession is your daily apology to God. That's it. Huh. God saved you. The Bible says that he bought you and I with a price. Mm -hmm. But as people buy houses that's unfinished, mm -hmm. God says, I bought you, I own you, but you need work. Yes, God. Yeah. Anybody in under construction? Good yeah. God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. You have a few unfinished basements in here? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 You got a few, room, few rooms in your house that I can't go in? Yes. <laughs> My God. I'm not talking about your Metaphor residence. I'm talking about your temple. Yes, yes indeed. Yes, know God. ye not that you are the temple of the living God? Yep. See, you got to understand. When God saves you, he now makes your being his temple. Yes. His place of residence. Yep. Now that I'm the temple of God, that's why the Bible says you have to be very, very careful who you join yourself to once God has become your temple. Yes. You don't want to mix things. Since we have unredeemed flesh, though God saved us and he did not remove a lot of our unrighteousness, but he cleansed us. The Bible said that he will wash you and I whiter than snow. Yes. Yes. But then there's a teaching that comes back and says God's will for us also is to remain unspotted yeah. from the world. That's right. He washed me white as snow, but then tells me to remain unspotted from right. right. How I would get washed, but then have to not get, he says, try to remain unspotted. Right. When he cleansed you the first time with the blood of Jesus. Uh -huh. That just means that you no longer can operate under your own righteousness. Yeah. But the Bible says your righteousness is as filthy rags. That's right. So the blood of Jesus does not mean that you're just, that you're a good person. It just means that you're covered. That's it. My Doesn't God. mean you're good. Can I teach you that the blood of Jesus is God's insurance? Mm. It's the covering that I have. When God put the he told them to put the blood of the lamb, but notice this, but not any lamb. He yes. said an unspotted lamb. Right. A lamb without blemish. Yes. 
he was talking to you in the Old Testament about him sending a Messiah. Yeah. The Savior had to be unspotted, unblemished, yes. or without sin. Yes. The lamb had to be unspotted so they would get a pure white lamb with no blemishes. Yes. God says, so when John saw Jesus, he said, behold the lamb of God yes. that takes away the sin of the world. Yes. For out, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Yeah. So in order to have my sins forgiven, I need innocent and pure blood. Jesus. Who can I get innocent and pure blood from? Come on. Come on, man. So what God did, since the Old Testament was a school teacher, he said, listen, I'm setting you up to be able to know the Messiah when I send it. Mm. So what I'm going to have you do in the meantime, between time, I'm going to have you use innocent animals yeah. who have no fault, have no sin, and I'm going to allow you to temporarily use their blood yeah. as a sacrifice and an atonement for your sin. Yes. So they took the blood of animals, but what God noticed that they will continue to sin, but kill more animals. Right. And every time I sin, I go find an animal to be able to kill. Yeah. Imagine if we were still living that way. Right. So an animal was suffering for the sins of the people right. because the yeah. people needed to be able to slay an animal for its blood as a covering yeah. over their sin. Yeah. God says, you know what? Y'all didn't got out of hand with this. <laughs> yes. Instead of y'all going closer to me, y'all just killing up everything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So God said, what I have to do, I have to send one lamb. I'm going to do this one time. Mm -hmm. One time only. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Notice this. After Jesus, there was no need for another That's right. Messiah. There was no That's need right. for to slay anybody else. After Jesus, he said, it is finished. It is finished. You no longer have to need the, the blood of lambs and bullets and things that That's nature. right. Now he says that Jesus sits on the right hand side of the Father yep. making intercession for us. And the Bible said that now he is that high priest. Yep. So I don't have to go down to the Catholic church and sit in the booth Good and, and confess oh, to a priest when he says I can boldly come before the throne of grace. Yes. Thank you, God. Good God. Thank you, Jesus. He's giving me permission to confess to him. Mm -hmm. all, I, all I gotta do is get on my knees and say, Father, please forgive me for my sins. Yeah. People say, well, I'm Christian. I don't have any sins. The Bible says that Good. if you say you have no sins, you lie and the truth is not That's in you. Right. Though you're a Christian, you have sin. That's right. Yeah. You're saved with sin. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. By grace have you been saved as any man's yeah. So Pastor you, I, I, I'm saved, but I still have the desire to do things yeah. that I know I'm not supposed to do. Come on now. You know why? Because the Bible says that you are a new creation. Yes. Behold, old things have passed away. All things will come new. The new part of you are is your spirit. You have been born again. Yes. But you have been born again in spirit, but you have the same old flesh. That's right. Come on now. Break it down faster. I'm born again. I'm a new person, but my flesh is the same. That's right. So now that I'm born again, though my flesh is the same, I now encounter and find myself in spiritual warfare. Yes. I'm a new person. Battling yes. the old desires. Yes. And every day I'm wrestling yes. with myself. Yes. Yes. That's called spiritual warfare. Yes. Spiritual warfare is me fighting my own desires as a new person. Yeah. And as I start off as a babe in Christ, yes. it's very, very important that I feed that babe in Christ. Yes. That he grows and that he matures. The Bible says, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Yes. So what happens is this. If I'm 40 years old and I've been sitting since 40 and I get saved today and he gives me a baby spirit or a baby Holy Spirit, that means that what? My flesh is stronger yeah. yes. 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 than my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So in order for my flesh to be able to fight my spirit and my spirit to fight my flesh, I must now train up my spirit yes. to have strength to be able to fight a flesh that's been here 40 something years. Yes, yeah. right. Break down. That was great. Yeah. That's why when people come into Christ, you don't just stop sinning right away. That's mm -hmm. right. And people in the church act like they, since they've been in church for a while, they have uh, become conquerors uh -huh. and have temperance 
uh-huh. and self-control yeah. over the things that you struggle uh-huh. with. Uh-huh. Come on, Let me teach you. Everybody uh-huh. in church is struggling with something yes. different. Yes, indeed. I called it this morning. We all have that thing that we're trying to stop doing. Yes. Some of us are two weeks out. We're three weeks out. We're a month out. Somebody this morning said they were here out. I applauded them. Ooh. Jesus. Thank you, God. You, you got this thing you're trying to stop doing. You wrestle with it. You have your own personal sin yeah, yeah. that you're trying to stop doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you pray. You say, God, remove this thing away from me. And he comes back and say, my grace is sufficient. That's my it. strength is made perfect in weakness. weakness. Yeah. Thank you, God. He I says, Peter, God. Satan has desired to sit he is weak. Mm-hmm. But when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Brother, yeah. So listen, God says that I'm not going to take away no personal sin. Yes, God. Because that's not the mission. The mission is not for God to remove personal sin. The mission is for you to be in ministry. Yeah. And in order to be in ministry, you don't have to have, it's not a requirement that you be in ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have a perfect life. Right. Right. Actually, God uses you better when you're imperfect. Yes, God. People identify better with you when you're imperfect. Yes, right. That's right. Can I teach you something that God can use you better when you have faults? Because the thing is that you you tend to be able to identify more with people. Yeah. When you say that you're going through some of the struggles and things that they're going through. Out of nowhere. How we connect with people. Paul said that. I, I'm going to boast in my infirmities. Yes. Thank you, Paul. Meaning what Paul was saying is that I find myself reaching more people mm-hmm. boasting about my struggles yeah. than, than boasting yeah. on how strong yeah. I am. That's right. Faith. Yeah. My God. Can I teach you, don't nobody care about how strong you are. <laughs> <That's the word. laughs> Jesus. Yes. You didn't learn anyway. I witness better when I tell people I'm just as weak as them. That's me. right. Keep our witness, bro, when I tell that brother I'm struggling with the same thing he's struggling yes, with. That's right. Yeah. You know what people say? You don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do nothing. They find that hard to believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what? I, people are, but you know what, though? When you identify, people say, you know, I want to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know what that feel like. I want to. I'm going to smoke that. I'm going to hit that, too. But I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Way my salvation set up. Right. right. Good go. Come on, man. Good. Woo. Sometimes you got to be trained for it. Yeah, I hit that joint too, but I won't. Right. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. That's real ministry right there. That's right. Real ministry. Yeah, man. I can say, yeah, I, but I won't. Relate. I would, but I won't. Come on, man. But you turn people. Uh, that, that is from the pit of hell. Uh-huh. Uh, God, I rebuke that. No. <laughs> That ain't how you reach me. Yeah, um, no, no, no. Man, you right. make me feel bad about liking what we both like. That's right. <laughs> you just not being honest. Yes. <laughs> What's you? Learn, learn, learn to be honest about what you're dealing with. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, and yes. that's how you win more people. Yes, indeed. You win more people confessing your faults. The Bible yes. tells you, James 5, 16, confess your faults to your brethren. And, and listen, the reason why, the reason why you do it is... So you become more relatable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus wanted to be around the disciples because they were more relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not around religious people. Religious people act like they have it all together. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's why you don't feel comfortable in church. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sit all up high. Because they act like they have it all together. Mm-hmm. Having a form of godliness, but yes. what denying the power of their own. There it is. Oh, I, love, I love the quote I mentioned this morning on Facebook. I read it. it says, they say, shout out to all the Christians who fornicate, cheat, lie, steal, commit adultery, but don't smoke and drink because it's a sin. <laughs> Good job. Come on now. The three big things in Christianity, smoke, drink, homosexuality. Yes. They decided to nominate the other ones as misdemeanors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are the three felonies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says that in the book of James, he says that if you break one, you break them all. You break them all. That's right. 
no one is greater than other. No one is greater than other. That's right. He said, let him without sin cast the first stone. That's right. So that means that the liar is just as guilty as the murderer. Yes. Right. Come on, Pastor. Yes. The fornicator is just as guilty as those who come. Come on, Pastor. That's right. Jesus says, do not judge for the same measurement that you use shall be measured unto you. That's right. Yeah. The same way you judge the murderer, he says, I'm going to judge your lie the same way. Good yeah. God of mine. See there? Amen. If he judged me the way I judge other people, then I want to start showing more grace. Yes. Uh, yeah. I want to yes. start showing more mercy because yes. I want him to be merciful. Yes, yes. right. There you go, Pastor. That's why I don't judge nobody for nothing they do because I stay right. my own stuff. There you go. I stay in my lane. Good God of mine. That's why you got to watch it when you have your own rights. The people say, I don't see how they do that. I mean, Listen, but you have your own. That's right. Because you do something that somebody thinks is so nasty and disgusting. Uh -huh. Yeah. But though you have justified your reasons for doing it. That's Come right. Ahead. That's uh -huh. right. Okay. I remember one time in a man talk meeting, they said, what's sin? If God said you could keep one, you could keep it. Mm. Let you get away with it. Yeah. So everybody wrote down their own personal sin. They said, that's the thing God wants from you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I say, why doesn't God remove the thing that I'm struggling with? He wants me to confess it. That's but he right. has me to be able to keep it for a reason. The Bible says that though when I am weak, I am strong. Oh, yes. My grace is my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. God says, I allow you to keep that weakness that I may be made perfect. That's right. You have to be very, very mature and understand wisdom to understand yep. why would God allow me to keep something that's causing me to stumble? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that confession keeps me close to him? Yes, God. See, if God made me perfect, I could pop my collar. I yes. could pull my suspenders. Mm -hmm. I could walk around and feel like I got it all together. That's right. God doesn't, God doesn't remove things from me, but he does give me the ability through temperance and self-control to be able to have power over my over own flesh. But so right. God is not removing anything. Right. Yeah, I've heard different teachings. I heard some people say, Pastor Q, God delivered me. I woke up and mm. I, I didn't have to taste of nicotine. I didn't want no more smoke. No, what God did was change your heart. That's it. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, God. God removed your heart, and it was a heart thing. Yeah. Because, yeah. let me teach you, anything that you do that you're not supposed to do is basically a vice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're going through something else. So if, I, if, if my problems are causing me to drink and God fixes my problems, I don't need to drink. Yeah. If my problems is causing me to hit a J, he fixed the problem, I don't need to hit the J. Yeah. I'm not saying a lot of you don't do it for recreational purposes, but what I've learned and what I've taught in through ratio, people have vices to help them deal with issues they can't deal with. My, my, my. Good God, Pastor. Mm. So, it's not that I'm an alcoholic. I have an issue that's causing me to be an alcoholic. If he fixed the issue, what's the purpose of God removing alcohol from somebody then just to find out they're going to pick up another vice? Yeah, yeah. Because alcohol is not the problem. Mm -hmm, right. mm -hmm. Weed is not the problem. Yeah. Right. The problem is that I'm broken. I have other issues. Yeah. And I just need something to help me deal. My God. That's why God is all about healing first. God says, I don't remove things away from you because healing will do that. Yes. Healing will remove people out of your life. Yes, God. Yeah. It will. Yeah. The more you heal, you will start to detach. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. When you heal, you detach. You do. Yeah. When you're broken, vulnerable, weak, you stay attached. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. That's some of us don't know how to be by ourselves. Yeah. yeah. My, my. It's a sign of weakness. Yeah. The wolf is not as strong by himself. Yeah. He doesn't have what the lion has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't been created that way. That's right. His strength is in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Notice the lion don't run in packs. Mm -mm. That's right. The wolf need a crew. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> the lion is very, very much um, in tune, in touch with his identity, yeah. knowing who he is. Yes. It's taught that the wolf don't feel comfortable alone. Alone. Yeah. Wow. 
So we have to find more walls to run with. Great thing. But if the wolf had no had fixed this insecurity, it would know how to stand by himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, My Lord. confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Here's the thing. Paul talked about it as well also. Paul said, the things I do are the things I don't want to do. He says, I'm doing things that I hate to do, yeah. but the things I want to do, they're not the things yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Paul is talking about spiritual warfare. He says that even when I did good, evil was present Present's with me. Yeah. Yeah. Though Paul is saved, he recognizes that he has unrighteousness. You are saved, but you have unrighteousness. Yes, God. Yes, indeed. God doesn't remove the unrighteousness. Yeah. You're saved, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't remove the unrighteousness. Actually, that's up to you to do. That's right. He <laughs> says, if you draw near unto me, I will draw near unto you. Mm -hmm. King David taught it also. He said, Father, he said, God created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. You can be saved and God, because the Bible talks about us walking in the light as he is in the light, the light is to reveal and to expose. Yeah. So when God exposes something about you, for one is to keep you humble, and as one is to learn to be able to start correcting you. Yes, God. But it's through confession. Why does God want me to confess you? Because that is the relationship. And anything that you do, admittance, plays a big part of growth, spiritual yes. growth, and correcting something yes. that you first have to be able to admit. It. Yes. yes, indeed. People want you to admit fault. The problem that happened with Adam and Eve was that God, well, Adam never knew that he could repent. People always say, why did Adam repent? Why did he say, God, I'm sorry. Yeah. I messed up. Mm -hmm. He never did that. He said, God, it was the woman that you gave me. Yes, you right. Me God. The blind. If you never gave me that woman, I wouldn't be in this position. He asked the woman, he said, woman, what, what would you do? She said, well, you gave us the serpent. It's the devil's fault. Hey. Adam and Eve both had the opportunity to be able to what? Repent. What did they do? Pass the blame. Yeah. Pass the blame. You ask people why they the way they are, they blame somebody else. Yeah. You don't get healed until you confess and say, you know what? Okay. I played a part in this too. Yes, God. Yes, God. Tomorrow, you, you go on dates and all they do is bash their ex. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Were they bad for doing it, or you crazy for allowing it? Yep. Which yes. is part of what you say? Which is <laughs> everybody's blaming somebody else for the way that they are. Adam blamed the woman. The woman blamed the serpent. Nobody repents. Yes. Yes. My Lord. yes. God said nobody made you do anything That's because right. you knew what I said. That's yeah. right. Adam went and hid himself. One of the reasons why Adam hid because. Though God told him not to take from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, God never told him that he was a forgiving God. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Where in Genesis did God say, if you do take of it, I can forgive you? Actually, what people don't know of a great teaching is that God already knew yes. they were going to mess yes. up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But Jesus which is at that time, if you read the Bible correctly, the Bible said that there was a tree of life inside the garden of Eden, which represents, is a type of Christ. Let me say that. There were different trees in the garden, but God said there was a tree of life in the garden also. Because yeah. after they sinned, God had to kick them out of the garden yes. for, from getting them to take from the tree <coughs> of life. Yeah. The tree of life that God was trying to keep them from, he had to push 2,000 years ahead of time and place that tree in Calvary. My, 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 my. The Bible said, it's cursed of any man that hangeth on a tree. He removed the tree out of the garden and placed it on Calvary. Yes. My Lord. This is what I'm teaching. Jesus was present as a tree in the garden of Eden. Yes, yes. Yes, he was. Thank you, God. He always was present. That's right. That's right. Through a great teaching. Yep. 
<laughs> but God couldn't allow him to take from this That's right. because That's he right. not yet had died. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. He says, in order for me to stop you from taking the tree of life, mm -hmm. I have to allow that mm -hmm. tree of life to be crucified. That's yeah. right. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. 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 Yeah. Because yeah. without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sins. That's right. So you see how he moved the tree of life. Yeah. He moved it to Calvary. Because mm -hmm. now that when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we now have life. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they could not take from the tree of life when it was in the Garden of Eden because they was in sin. And since they was in sin, if they would have took from the tree of life, then sin would have lived forever. Yeah. Because you know what would have happened though? Um, there would have been no sacrifice. Yes. He had to be able to die. And now that they died, now we go back to Romans nine, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Yes. If we confess with our mouth and believe with our hearts, the Lord Jesus, that he died on the cross, yes. we shall be saved. Say, yes, God. Thank you, God. Without the shedding of blood, there's a remission of sin. So what happens on a daily basis? Daily basis, I have to always confess what God calls now, since I have been adopted, the Bible says we received the adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yes. Since he has adopted us, I must always confess my unrighteousness now. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in school, what they taught us, they said this, and it may not make sense to you, but they said, unbelievers commit sin, believers commit unrighteousness. My God. There's a difference. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievers commit sin, believers commit unrighteousness. That's right. And if you got to be able to understand it, because what God is saying is that the, the difference between sin and unrighteousness has to do with the relationship. That's yes. right. Come on now. But it's still considered sin. Yes. It has the same consequences. Yes. But the difference is, is that you may not believe this, but if you're fornicating and you're not saved, and I'm fornicated and I'm saved, I'm still going to heaven. Yeah. You're going to die in your sin. I yes. hope that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Because I'm fornicating, but I have already confessed. Yeah. And I've been bought and I have been purchased. Yes. Thank you, God. Christ. Thank you, God. God, bye. Ah. Somebody said it don't make sense. So, well. you know Jesus mm -hmm. and we both fornicate, but if he come while we both in bed, I'm going to hell when you not? Yeah. Absolutely. Good God. <laughs> Did he not tell them to put the blood over the doorpost? Yes, there it is. Come on, Pastor. Inside of the house, put the blood over the doorpost for fornicators. Yes. Adulterers. Yep. Liars. Yes. And thieves. Yes, murderers. Did he yes. say you had to be good? Or he just said you just had to have the blood? Pastor, that's that wrong because now you're saying that Christians can be saved and just sin when they want to. That sounds like what you're saying. Christians can be saved, sin, repent, have sins forgiven, but consequences stay at the door. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Unbelievers can be in sin, don't repent, die in that sin, have no covering, no insurance. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. You done broke it down. Does anybody in the room have car insurance, health insurance, life insurance, yeah. house yeah. insurance? Covered. What is the insurance for? If something happens, I am covered. covered. Yes, indeed. Come on, Pastor. But understand, there's a consequence exactly. to those who are covered. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell you what it is? The deductible. <laughs> Make it plain, Pastor. You oh, I still gotta pay a five hundred to get this Yeah. And if your insurance low, your deductible is high. And if your insurance high, your deductible is low. Come on, pastor. So I'm Christian, but I sin, but I cover, but I got a deductible. Good God. You an unbeliever and you sin and you have no insurance. You pay all out of what? Pocket. For well, the wages of sin is death, yes. but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, sir. Can yes, yes, you afford yes, not yes, to have insurance? Yes, no. You can. No, you can. Come on, Pastor. Then we don't get that. Come on, my God. You cannot afford Save not to have insurance. My God. So the difference between me and you is that I'm insured. Yes. Yeah. That's it. With a deductible. Good God. So King David, he says, this 
listen, I know you slept with that woman. Yeah. He says, God, the prophet told King David, says, God going to remove your sin, but the sword shall never, never. depart from never. your heart. Never. The sword was the word of God. That's right. The sword yeah. was the consequences. That's right. King yeah. David slept with a man's wife, got her pregnant, sent her husband to battle, got him killed. Kill. God forgave him, but God yeah. said the consequences will forever yeah. be yeah. in your house. Yeah. After that, King David was forgiven. Given. The woman got pregnant. God killed the first child. Yeah. Gave him back a second child, yeah. which was King Solomon. Uh -huh. After that, David's household was no more good. Correct. His son raped his daughter. Yes. His son killed the son for raping Look his daughter. Him. His other son tried to take over the, 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 the palace and yes. the kingdom. Yes. All yes. that came from what? That one sin. You done broke it all the way down. Like guess what? God was still, was still king. Yeah. And still considered a man after God. That's God. right. Yep. But guess what God did? He said, you did this thing in secret. Yeah. I'm going to do it under the up. sun so everybody can see. Go. Thank you. Oh, man. That was great. Though David God. was still king, everybody knew his business. Yeah. Can you imagine being king God. and everybody know your business? Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine being a pastor oh. and everybody knows your business? That's you. But it never stopped him from being king. That's right. right. Never stopped him from oh, being man. pastor. That's right. That's what they talked about. Oh, never stopped him oh, from man. being king. Yeah. Never stopped him from being a yeah. pastor. Yeah. But everybody in the town yeah. talked about it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But he was still king. He was yeah. still king. Yeah. Thank you, God. Some people Thank don't like God. the fact that they know you mess up and you still can't. Good God, buddy. Yeah. Hey, come on back to you. You know, he said to him that is able to present you faultless to yeah. keep you from stumbling. stumbling. Thank you, God. You know what? God has a way of making me shine and mm -hmm. dealing with me all at the same time. You better say it. You better say it. You better recognize it. Well, God be good to me and spanking me at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Be sure to live. God be dealing with me and I still be shopping. Yeah. <laughs> Flossing. Floss. But he's still correcting me. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. God be correcting me but blessing me at the same time. My, my, my. How does he do that? Good God. Good God. Good God. Man, God got a way yeah. of blessing you and yeah. dealing with you yeah. all at the same time. Yes, he does. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. 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 God. Yes. 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 You don't say it today. Yeah. And you know what? Because I repent. Yes. 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 Every time I do something, I repent. Yes. Father, yes. forgive me. Forgive me my trespasses, Lord, I forgive those who trespass against me. Yes. Yes. Created me a clean heart. Yes. yes. You know, white spirit within me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You know the thing about it is that the more and more you get into God, the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. And it said it shot that it two edged sword, yes. pierced into the divided sword of the spirit, yes. and is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. Yes. 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 God, God said all that to say, He said, you know what my word is doing? It's showing me the your, the, 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 he's um, discerning your thoughts yeah. and the intent of your heart. That's right. That's what the yeah. word is doing. So God says when you're asking for stuff, mm -hmm. I understand the intent yeah. of that what you ask. That's I right. know why you want what you want. Yeah. 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 My, my, my. Thank you, Lord. God says that thing you're asking for has a motive behind it. Yeah. yeah. He know. I already know why you want it. Yeah. yeah. You want it for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. God says, what you're asking me to do is give you something to make other people mad. Good God. God says you're asking me to give you something to cover up so something you can hide behind. Wow. Lord. Come on, Pastor. But when Adam sinned, the first thing he did when God came, he did what? Hit he himself. Hit, yeah. God said, Adam, where are you? He wasn't saying, like, peekaboo, where are you? <laughs> he said, where are you? Because normally when I come around, you, you greet me. Yeah. 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 You always know when your dog do something wrong. Uh huh. <laughs> when I have my dog, when every time he do something in the house, he he don't greet me the same way. Yeah. In the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's just slow. <laughs> like, hey, I'm happy to be like, hey. <laughs> Gotta start looking around right the house, smelling. Uh huh. Guilty. Guilty. So when God came into the act. 
the, the God, the Bible said that God used to walk with them in the cool of the day, Adam hid. Oh, wait, don't you know how a person been talking about how they embrace <laughs> Yeah. The kind of actions speak loud on words. Yes. The body language speaks yep. yeah. loud. The energy different. The, oh. the energy different. Yeah. God came into the garden and Adam didn't receive it. So he said, Adam, where I die? He said, I hid myself because I knew that I was naked. Yeah. You know what Adam was basically telling God? I hid myself because now I see myself differently. Yeah. And now I know. Listen, here's a great teaching, right? Nobody ever understood this, but the 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 the, uh, the theologians will get a great teaching. Do you know that when Adam and Eve took from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, mm -hmm. they knew all the commandments? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's a great teaching. People say that the commandments were first given in the time of Exodus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. When Moses first got him. Yeah. Can I teach you that the Bible says in the beginning yeah. was the word. Yes, God. And the yeah. word was, was God. with God. And the word was, was God. God. Yeah. So that means that the word was always in play even before Moses got there. Yes, it did. Come on. Listen, this is such a great teaching. Adam and Eve did not know none of the commandments except one. Do not take from the tree of no, knowledge and good evil. That's all they knew. That's the only commandment God gave them. Even now, God has simplified the commandments. Yes. It's only two. What do you mean? Well, he says, if you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and you love your neighbor as yourself, he says, listen, all the commandments hang on these two. That's right. In the book of Genesis, they only had one. Then when they went to Exodus, Deuteronomy, and, and, and all those books, they got like 600 commandments. Yes. Then they get to the Old Testament. Jesus said, well, if you keep two, you should maybe keep the other six. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Simplified. In the beginning, they had one. But when they took from the tree of what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Of what? Good. And, and what? And evil. Yeah, yeah. So when you was a baby and you ran around the house naked, you did not know until somebody said, what? Hey, put some clothes on, you naked. Right. But you were comfortable until somebody said, hey, yeah. you naked, go put some clothes on. Right. Then you felt bad about being naked. naked. Yeah. 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 When well, Adam and Eve took from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, they knew how God felt about right or wrong. Yeah. Yes, come on. Here's something you may not even understand. The reason why God has commandments set up the way he do because certain things are what they call, what is it, gate openings? Yes. Certain drugs are gate openings. Yes. Sex is a gate opener. Yeah, yeah. Certain things that God has not wanted me to tap into before time because of what it opens up. Yeah. So God says uh, sex is good, but he says the bed is undefiled in marriage. Yeah. yeah. Notice this, that God wanted all things that he has given us to be done in order and in decency. Yes. God says, once you know how cocaine feels, mm -hmm. once you know how drugs feel, sex feel, once you know what the turn up feels like, it's going to be hard to keep. That's right. My, my. Because it opens up doors to other things. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Jesus. God says it's not that I don't want you to enjoy life, but the things that you want to indulge in out of order and in decency yes, yes. will open up other doors. Yes. Yeah. You don't realize that the things that we have tampered with, even from the time of our youth, have created monsters inside of us. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Is it anything you wish you had not tried? Good <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah.
I wish I just would never have tried that. No. I, I wish I had never started fornicating because now I know how good it is. Yeah. Ain't good enough. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. So, Adam, so God told Adam Eve, he said, not that I was keeping you from anything. Because listen to what the devil said. He said, God knows that in the day that you take of the tree, you will be like God, knowing good from evil. He made them feel like God was withholding something from them. Mm -hmm. The trick of the enemy. Makes you feel like God is withholding something good from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God says, I don't withhold anything good from those of others. That's right. From every, he said, every good and perfect gift comes from the above from the Father, like whom there's no um, shade with no verbal attorney. That's he right. He says, every good and perfect gift comes from above. That's right. From the Father, like they say, every, every gift that I've given you is shaped and matured exactly for you. Please. You shouldn't desire. If God says, if I haven't given it to you, then you shouldn't have it. That's mm. right. Good God. The reason why a lot of us are so messed up right now, because we have indulged in some things, mm -hmm. got exposed to some things, mm -hmm. yeah. and it just opened up other doors to some yep. things. Yep, my, my, Amen. my. Good God, Pastor. All starts out chewing gum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Starts off that simple. Ooh, Jesus. Yes, God. Mouth full of cactus, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pastor Q, good God of mine. Speaking of uh, <laughs> King David, King David had the opportunity to repent, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. He didn't repent until he heard what he had done in another form or fashion. Mm -hmm. So King David slept with Bathsheba, had her, her, her uh, when Bathsheba, what it was is this. King David slept with Bathsheba, Bathsheba sent word back telling King David, that she was pregnant. Yeah. But here's the thing I went about this morning, I want you to understand. When King David first asked about Bathsheba, yeah. they told her who her father was. Mm -hmm. Then they told King David who her husband was. That's right. King David just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Send her to me. Send her to me. Mm -hmm. Even with that information. Exactly. Right then and there. You, you don't know, you know what the Bible says that sometimes we entertain angels on the way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe in my, in my form of teaching of understanding that before I have done something, God has always laid the consequences yes. before I actually done what I did. Yes. He laid the consequences. I knew what I was getting myself into. Yeah. So basically, in so many words, when King David was asking about Bathsheba, the man he was talking to said, man, do you, you know that is it? Don't you know who her father is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you know that she's married? Yeah. He still says send her. Mm -hmm. It sounds like then that King David doesn't honor marriage. That's right. No, King David just feel like he can have yeah. whatever he wants yeah. to have. That's right. He can. can I tell you that King David would have got away with that and would have never repented if the woman had never gotten pregnant? Yes. He slept with her and sent her back home. Mm -hmm. She sent him a message saying, hey, I'm with child. Yeah. So King David said, oh boy, this is how I'm fix this. <laughs> Where's her husband? He's fighting. He's a soldier in my army. Yeah. Uh -oh. King David says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send him back yeah. from battle. Front line. Have him come home and sleep with his wife. Yeah. And it's going to look like it's his. Right. Yeah. King yeah. David was already familiar with the Jerry Springer. And uh -huh. Boy, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Have you ever sinned and thought of how to fix it? Wow. Yeah. Good yeah. God. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Pastor. I am Pastor. Okay. You done hit somebody's car and you're going to take their car back and wipe the scratches. You know how you do it. I'm going to make it look like I didn't do it. Yeah. You know, wow. Instead of King David repenting, he's going to have that man come home from battle yeah. and his whole son look like King David. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> King, that's how pretty King David was. Yeah. Oh my God, that's terrible. Man, walking around the village with a son that looked like the king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went very, and your kids look just like the king. Doing double take. Doing double take. Boy, he look like David. Some guy got friends like that. Yeah. You better know that. Oh, she say, John, her baby father, the baby look like Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> She's still saying John, baby. And yeah, we all know. We all know that. <laughs> I got a homie got a kid, baby, don't look up like him. He loves him, don't he? Hey. But me and him and his mama know that that's my state. Hey. Do you think, kid? Take him to your mother, your mama know, but you want to be a good dad, man, more power to you. Yeah. But everybody know. Everybody. Because where the kid looks. 
Yeah. King David is like, I'm going to disguise this thing. And guess what? Uriah the Hittite comes home from battle and does not go home. Yeah. He goes to King David and said, King David, I can't, uh -huh. I can't go home and fight, man. Don't we have battle? King David said, man, go ahead home. Uh -huh. Take a day. Yeah. <laughs> he don't go home. Yeah. Yo, what King David do? He brought out the, he brought out the Patron, he brought out the, the whiskey, he brought out the wine, said he got Uriah the drunk. Yeah. Uriah still wouldn't go home. Yeah. King David said, put him on the front line. Front line. Now I'm trying to hide my sin. Yeah. yeah. Since he won't go home and be with his wife, it can't look like the child was his. Right. So put him on the front line. Yeah. You know, he did that, put Uriah on the front line. You know that God still forgave him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. King David. Still forgave him. Yeah. King David killed. King David did all that, didn't feel nothing about it. Went mm -hmm. back to being king. Yeah. And the prophet came to King David. He said, Listen, King, I want, I want to talk to you since you're the king. What they used to do is that when you're the king, the king used to act as the judge, right? Yeah. And he said, Listen, I want to bring you an issue that's going on in town. He said, Man, the man came through town and uh, uh -huh. he had one little, little lamb and Man, the dude that had everything took his one little lamb away from him. Yeah. King David said, man, what? He said, man, that man should be put to death. Yeah. He did that. That man was yeah. him. He yeah. said, man, that man is you. you yes. Know? See? Like so let me tell you what God said about that. He said, God said, man, that um, you're going to pay for that. Good God. And you know what King David did? Right there in that moment, he repented. He knew. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. He did different than Adam and Eve. Right there in that moment, he repented. Yeah. Yeah. But God said, the prophet told him, listen, God said he's going to spare your life, but the sword shall not yeah. depart from your house. I mean, the consequences will be there. Yeah. You know, here's a great teaching, right? Sometimes it's not the devil in your life, it's your own consequences. That's right. My Lord. My Lord. Yeah. Some people are the devil's busy. No, it's your consequences yeah. because you, you pay for the stuff you do, though you haven't yeah. been forgiven. Yeah. yeah. My God, my God. You ain't never seen something happen in your life and been reminded of something you did? You better oh, know it. My mind the only one that worked that way? No. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. I know this stuff from 93. I know it. <laughs> But they, 
it's just such a hard drive to church. <laughs> That's the kid. Good, good. I've been saying, sir. Yes, God. <laughs> you know, it's even getting dressed for church. It's hard. But to go out, everything comes easy. Everything for God is always so hard. Oh, oh, my, my, my. Good you know, God. the spiritual thing about it is that there's always something keeping you from doing the right thing. Yeah. Very yeah. few roadblocks in doing the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why it says the road is straight and narrow. Yeah. He said that the road, the road, to, the, the road, the way to him is the straight and narrow. Yeah. But the way to destruction is wide and broad. Yeah. yeah. The reason why it's straight and narrow because straight and narrow is going to require some sacrifices That's in right. the movement of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. How fast do you drive down one of them narrow DC, DC alleys? Come on, now. Do you drive on an open freeway? You, you open it up on a freeway. Yeah. But can I teach you the narrower, if that's, is that a word? Narrow? It will be the narrower. The narrower the street, <laughs> the slower the drive. Am I yes. Correct? Yes. Get blessed by the teacher. He has to narrow the way to slow you down. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> do you know you can go 100 miles an hour up a narrow street? Mm. But why don't you do it? You don't feel comfortable. That's right. right. Too what does God do in life? He closes the door. Yes. Closes the path. Makes it narrow. And it causes you to make certain adjustments. Yes. Causes you to have to be able to slow down. Yes. <laughs> When you're on a narrow street and you look over at the other street, they're going so much faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it's a teaching because God is slowing us down, but at the same time, too, when things are narrow, you, you, you know what? I, I watched something the other day. I watched a guy go down a narrow strip, street in a pickup, and because the street was so narrow, he had to pull his mirrors in. This was yeah, so yeah, blessed. Yeah, yeah. Get blessed by this message. He had to pull his mirrors in on both sides, right? Yep. Now, he can't see. When he looks at his mirrors, he don't see yep. what's behind him. Yep. He sees himself. Yes, it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You got to get blessed. No he had to pull his mirrors in to see himself and not what's behind That's him. That's right. The narrow road caused him to look more at himself and less than what was behind him. Wow. Come on, Pastor. Thank you, God. God will take you away also. That's narrow. Mm -hmm. And only you can fit. Yes, that's right. right. Yeah. You only tell a bit. Thank you, Father. <sighs> what that mean, Pastor Q? Everybody can't go with you. Mm -hmm. that way you take. Yes. I'm not saying they're all haters, but God will, <laughs> God will yeah, develop yeah. a road for you that only you can squeeze through. That's why. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I remember when I used to go from real talk to my pick, my man Big Mike. When I used to go to uh, Connors, the Foxhall, mm -hmm. I was skinny enough at the time to squeeze through the gate. <laughs> yeah. Mike had to walk all the way around the neighborhood, <laughs> and I used to be sitting there waiting for him. I didn't got my stuff from the ice cream truck, got my chips, <laughs> because Mike was big and he couldn't squeeze through the gate. Yeah. He had to walk the long walk. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to bless you with a great teacher, right? I was able to squeeze through. Mike didn't know it was a blessing for him to not be able to squeeze through the gate. That's right. Guess what we found out as we got older? Mike needed them miles to be able to walk down. Good God God. was blessing him. Yeah. The Lord of the Lord helped his cardiovascular yeah, yeah. burn yeah. all summer yeah. of the week. Come on now. Yeah, same thing. But every time he had to go the long way, he was getting blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he needed to be walking. That's right. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Sometimes it's time was a blessing when God don't allow me to squeeze through the fence like the skinny mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. God took them the long way coming out of Egypt to back on that story. He took them the long way. You know why? That's what somebody told me. God will take you the long way because the intimacy is better on a longer car ride. That's true. Come on now. Amen. Let me say this. 
I heard I heard father tell the family, we can get there in four hours on a flight. But it'll take us 14 hours by car. Uh, yeah, yeah. They said, won't we just take a flight? He said, well, the 14 hours gives us time to be intimate. Yeah. Time together. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. God takes the long way to build the intimacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, God, I mean, God says the faster you get there, you won't know what to do because you haven't been intimate with That's you. That's right. The longer you take to get there, you're going to know what to do. Why? Because yeah. you've been intimate yes, with That's right. That's right. Yes, right. Yes, right. Said, so the reason why people crash and burn, mm -hmm. one hit wonders, new money, get money, lose money, <laughs> no money. So they don't spend enough time with me. That's right. But, 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 That's right. Correct me if I'm wrong. God got me and you waiting so long and I know what to do with the bag when I get it this time. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Trying to get the bag I back I had in the nineties. Right. Yeah. I don't know where that money went. Uh, <laughs> you know. One day it was under the mattress and in shoe boxes. Oh my goodness. It was in <laughs> cereal boxes. Ah, oh wow. Stuffed in teddy bears. I don't in the rice. I don't know where that money is. But God showed me I had it before and didn't do nothing with it. That's right. 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 Amen. See, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it back yes. to you. Absolutely. I'm going to give it back to you. But this time, since you've been kept, you're going to know what to do with yes. it. Yes, God. Yeah. Before we talk about God, restore to me the years of locusts of Eden. Yeah, yeah. God only restores when. The condition of the individual has changed. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Your restoration is tied into your condition. That's yeah. it. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes. When is God going to give me back my stuff? Right. When is your condition going to change? That's right. That's the question. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the truth, man. Some of y'all nasty and broke. <laughs> What's going to happen when you get money? Good go. You're going to be rich and nasty. Yeah. You got an attitude when you broke. What's the matter God give you money? They ain't gonna change the attitude. No. Nope. It's gonna make you worse. Yeah, yeah. God says that's why He says you be faithful over little, I'll make you rule over much. Thank you, God. God says I have to change the condition of your heart before I do anything. Thank you, God. Father God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the people that watch it. Oh, Father God, Lord, we just thank you for every blessing that we receive. Thank you, Father God, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm the voice pastor. Thank you for the opportunity today. I ask my whole question to leave the past chapter in PayPal inside of the description. If God has blessed you with your word today, you want to give a, um, a donation to the ministry or a tithe or offer, you can do it through Cash App and you can do it through PayPal. We thank you guys for uh, being a part of our broadcast today. I love you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.